It is December the 9th, 2023. I'm Chris, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. We're back. This is The Future of Photography. There's Adrian. Hello. Jeremiah. Hello. Hello. Everyone doing good? Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alright. No, I'm, 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 I've had a I've had a really quiet day today, actually. So that's nice. I'm quite relaxed. Going out for dinner in a bit. You know, it's gonna be nice. Yeah, it's a good Saturday today. I got a bag of pecan nuts out of my advent calendar. Oh, nice! I love pecans. Pecan pie so is one of pe- pecan pie is favorite. is one of the best things in life. <laughs> my favorite right. pie. Is, is it? it? Is yeah. it? But you can't eat it every day because if you did, you'd die. <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. Very you have true. you have to alternate it with banana cream pie. Do you guys uh, have advent calendars? Uh, do I do personally that? don't. My children do. I personally don't. Um, no. But we should we should we should have a like a like a TFOP advent calendar with <laughs> That'd be cool. little little cameras in and film rolls and prints and uh, yeah a couple a couple of years ago uh, emma bought me a calendar from an advent calendar from a brewery which had 20 24 cans of beer of all different flavors and different types cool. and some of them so tasted good. like marshmallow and some of them were <laughs> chocolate and some of them were normal beers and some of them yeah some of them were just ridiculous you know like <laughs> cheesecake beer and stuff like that cheesecake stout and stuff yeah, it, crazy stuff but really good fun yeah, I, I get wrong with like chocolates and nuts and all. Anyway, nothing photographic. Um, but we're here to talk photography, so let's just do that. Adrian, you brought us the idea for today's episode, so um, why don't you take it away? I have, yes, thank you. Yeah, I am uh, deep down a delightful rabbit hole at the moment. Um, uh, listeners may remember that a couple of weeks ago, uh, my pick was a thermal printer, my pick of the week. And I'm massively down a lo-fi printing rabbit hole at the moment and loving every minute of it. You can even print them out in strips. Look at this, like a strip of prints. Yeah, oh, uh, beautiful. Oh, I'm waving away from the camera. So, so the, yeah, so I thought, let's let's talk about it, right? Because it's, yeah, last last week, I think it was last week, we had the, uh, the, the was it the phase one camera that had 150 megapixels? <laughs> and I thought, if I had 150 megapixels, I'd pr- probably print in some thin about three miles across right yeah so what what yeah remember when one megapixel enough was enough remember 640 by 480 on your computer screen and i mean uh, if if i add up all my cameras i can easily beat 150 megapixels (laughs) i'm not sure that i could add probably well uh, you know only because i've got too many though if you're talking about print size the the print uh that i showed you earlier offline was a uh, one point five giga <laughs> Wow. Okay. I'm one point five gigabytes. Gigabytes. Okay. For a single image. So as so you that, do, yeah, sure. So you were showing it that was nearly five feet long, and and are you printing out three hundred DPI then? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. So <laughs> this is not that, right? This conversation today is not that. I mean, that's a that looked like okay. an awesome print, so, but yeah. this this is the other end of the spectrum, right? This is so yeah. You know, early Instagram, remember? I think I think it was six forty pixels on a side, and you could only upload squares, right? Um, nowadays, I don't think you're allowed to upload photos to to Instagram at all. I don't know. But, Instagram I, was 640 pixel. Wow. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but I, I, I don't doubt it. I'm just so, I'm just like, okay, wow. Well, we're talking about 2010-ish or 2012, aren't we? And, you know, and we had retina phones, is it retina screen phones by, the, in that, by that time, but they were still quite small phones in those days. Um, yeah, they actually fit in your pocket in those days. Yeah, go figure. Um, and uh, yeah, that was the thing about Instagram. Made it available to everybody. Made it available on mobile data networks. Because you know, before we had four G and five G and stuff like that, it would work on a cellular connection because it was it was slow, but it will work. Yes. Yeah, and of course, because you didn't do anything other than view them on your phone in those days. That was you know, wasn't you? Know, they didn't need any more than that. Yeah. Didn't, who, need, who needs other than things other than square? You know. I think that we're about to have a renaissance in dot matrix printing, large one. Oh. So, so I as a kid, right when I was in primary school, right, um, 
the uh, we used to get paper, and you guys will remember this, I'm sure. It was um, it was massive paper, and it was um, and it came out folded out of a box, um, and it was green lines on one side and plain white on the other. And of course, it had the circles up the side, so it could be drawn through the printer. Somebody brought into school a pink panther, right, printed in ASCII. Right, so printed in ASCII characters you're, on you're, on you're about your age. six <laughs> on about standing up. Of course, the Pink Panther, right, is yep. is a fairly tall, thin character, right. So this printed quite well over six or so of these enormous, you know, um, concertina type, you know, papers, uh, and and it's like, oh wow, you can do that with computers. That's awesome and amazing. So yeah. And it's, then, a, it's like, a bit like you know you know the big pixels. It's like Lego bricks or Minecraft. It's sure there's a there's a rena renaissance of these kind of things. Well, pretty, pretty sure we, my little brother as well at one point printed a fake ID with a on a color dot matrix printer and tried oh. to use that to get into the pub when he was about sixteen. <laughs> Didn't one work. one only has to look at the um, the value of certain NFTs and early gameplay aesthetic. And even the movement of certain artists working in pixelated minimalism to try and do extraordinary work with the minimum amount of pixels. I know one in particular who's just a genius. And um, so it, it, it kind of goes through the limitations of the technology and it evolves into its own aesthetic. And I yes. think that is always the interesting balance between form function tools and processes um, that feed each other initially in the short term because it's like oh wow look what we can do then as the technology moves past it quite far past it we tend to circle back and appreciate the flaws as technique or as aesthetics or well, at least it's something fun to explore, right? Yeah. So, you know, well, talking about, I mean, you, you mentioned tools there, right? I've got, you know, put a few tools uh, for, for lo-fi photography into in, into our show notes here today. I'm going to start off with one of my favourites, one of my, been one of my favourites for many years, which is the good old Holger, right? Mm. So I'm sure you both have, yeah, Chris has got his Holger with him even. <laughs> well done, mine. Chris. I've got... It's all I've, taped. Mine is taped. Look, look oh, yeah, this, mine is, is this is what it sounds like. <laughs> we, Camera sounds are so important. What? There you go. Yeah. So I, I have a couple of Holgers. I didn't think to bring it actually to the, the, the recording. That looks like one with a flash. That's a fancy Holger, that is, Chris. Has you got that a flash is, on it? Yeah, wow. it has a flash on it. Yes, wow. It does. Fancy man. So the... Uh, and, co and color and a color wheel for the flash. Look, you can switch it. Oh, you've got a color wheel for the... Like, next, you'll be telling me oh, it's yeah, got that, a color... That, that's very advanced. It has filters <laughs> in there. Next, you'll be telling me it's got a color lens. Um... Optical lens. An optical lens. <laughs> F oh, as F opposed to a non-optical lens. I, I hear the optical lenses are the best kind. It yeah. is an optical lens. It says so on the on the box. Yeah, they Thank actually you. allow light through them. It's amazing. Um, yeah. I, I remember some 10, 15 years, no, 10, 10 years ago, maybe, um, uh, being horrified because I'd always wanted to try a Holger and never gotten around to it. It must be more than 10 years. And they suddenly went bankrupt. Um, and I was like... Uh, I must, yeah, sorry. and so and, and then someone sold someone sold the 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 injection mold for for them, and that one disappeared. That was a weird story, and then it reappeared, and yeah, yeah, the, yes, yeah, so it did. So you but can you still can buy, buy them. Holders. You can buy them now. Yes. You can buy them. You can buy them nowadays. The one I the, the one I've wanted but still don't have is the thirty five mil panoramic Holger because those <laughs> is really there a, a pa what? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there's yeah, there's yeah. like a yeah, yeah. It, it is. It's like the Holger version of an X pan, basically. <laughs> by, I think by the way, call it the Holger <laughs> pan. I'm not entirely sure. Um, by but, by the way, what to do? Just just to to fill in what Jeremiah has just said. It, it's an aesthetic, but there's one for me. There's one even more important aspect of shooting with something like this, and that is there's almost nothing you can you can you, you have to do with it, as in. There's no buttons. Yeah. There's no nothing. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a little, uh, you know you know the the, the focus is, is close, a, medium, far yeah. per, person, group, landscape. That's yeah. what you get. And then all you do is click. You press yeah. the button. So so it it kind of it kind of relieves you from any 
technical thoughts so you it can does. you can completely give in to the to the creative side of photography you do not have to think about anything with these kind of cameras so Put i'm film really in. glad sure. chris that you brought that up because that is one of the f most freeing things about lo-fi photography isn't it? it doesn't matter what tools you use it's the fact yes. you don't have to worry about whether it's sharp you don't have to worry what the settings are on your camera i mean yeah um, the holger of course has a it has two apertures i think one uh, one sunny and one cloudy and some models pretend they have two apertures and you even have a switch but nothing changes nothing when changes because the things that because the holes in the wheels are the wrong way around fix, yeah. and, <laughs> fix and, it in the mix as they but, say but, the, <laughs> but you don't even have to worry about that just stick it on cloudy because if you've got film and you overexpose it by a stop you just get a really nice exposure matter. so it doesn't matter right so it's it's fantastic it's a fantastic um fantastic tool fantastically freeing uh yeah, link in the show notes uh, uh, show notes to, to a whole bunch of holger photos happens to there be, is there, um, there is the one major advantage website. now because people do pay real money for apps that create light leaks and the, it, with the whole guy yeah. it's free completely it's built, built into in the camera um <laughs> yes and uh, my holga which is you know uh, i guess yeah. it's in some closet somewhere um uh, it, there's almost as much tape on the camera. Oh yeah, as, yeah, as absolutely. Because the backs are prone to so so light leaks fine. The back falling off because of poor engineering <laughs> exactly. and manufacturing quality is is slightly less fine because that will ruin your whole film. So yes, so ba uh, yeah, balancing the of art tape. of how much uh, light you want to leak in with the amount of tape that you're using or not is really a you know I think a creative process. And then, uh, of course, protecting the hinges so that the back does not fall apart um, is also good. But yes, uh, yeah, it's also yes. a lot of oh. fun. And 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 here is a good example: a gallery with multiple exposures. There's no, n there's not a single thing you have to do to get multiple exposures. You just press the button again, <laughs> again and again and again and again, again as yeah. many times as you like. Absolutely, yes. The, the trick is to remember to wind it on, actually, rather than... Yeah, you, the, <laughs> many of the multi-exposures, uh, of course, are completely accidental. <laughs> so. Famous That's quintuple right. exposure, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, okay, okay, all good. So we all love the Holgers, right? It's an easy one to start with. Everybody loves a Holger, um, and uh, everybody should have one, I think, even if it's only, uh, you know, for occasional use when you, feel, God, when would, you get the would, would an 8 by 10 Holger... That would be something. <laughs> that, that, just the thought of hauling something like that. That would be something. I, would, I would use that, yeah. I think, so, yes, yes. Although, yeah, yes. I'm sure you're, um, I'm, I'm sure the, uh, uh, the, yeah, never mind. Anyway, sorry, I've, <laughs> got, I've gone down a rabbit hole. I've got, I'm, I'm just picturing the 8x10 hole. Let's move swiftly on. So we're going to have a digital <laughs> one next, right? This is this is one I personally haven't played with, but it's had a bit of a resurgence in the last couple of years. But and I'm not talking about the, the craze for digi cameras. That is, those are way too high fidelity for today's conversation, right? They're not talking about early 2000 points and shoots here. We're, talk, we're going to go back further than that to the Game Boy camera, oh. right? Um, nice. And uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, I'd I'd love to play with one of these. So this one takes this one takes low fidelity digital photography to to a quite frankly ridiculous level. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has, I think, five pixels. <laughs> the game uh, uh, and a couple more. We have some pictures on the screen that yeah, came out I found of a game Flickr game group. Camera, yeah. So that's how far that's how old this is. I had to go to Flickr to find a reliable source of Game Boy camera photos. I think, if I remember rightly, it had something like sixteen grayscale. It was capable of, um, <laughs> if and, <at> all. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and that was about it. And and it was literally uh, an attachment. So Game Boys, for those that don't remember them, you used to get your games on a cartridge, and it used to go in a slot on the top of the machine. Uh, and uh, this was literally a a a cartridge uh, that you slotted into the top of the machine that happened to have a camera integrated on top of it so you you, you literally were playing you, you were playing a game on your game boy a game of photography so uh uh this is um it it's a it, i've got to say it's a bit much even for me this one <laughs> i've i've seen okay so so um i don't have the the links to the to the according websites here but i've seen two projects where one um someone built 
like like a, a real like electronics project where someone built a Game Boy camera or r redid it in a way that it would allow to circumvent the Game Boy internal electronics and get some better quality out of it. So there is some better quality and someone else built a miniature Game Boy camera, used the entire electronics, the original electronics, but shrunk it down so it oh, fits yeah. inside a Game Boy cartridge. <laughs> oh, took, wow. a, took a lens from an iPhone or something and and made this thing as small as a Game Boy cartridge. If you know what, what the size of a Game Boy cartridge, yeah, that's a tiny kind of That is, yeah, camera. similar in size to a compact flash card for your camera or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah so, so really, really amazing. There's a huge community around the whole Game Boy photography thing. Yeah, yeah. It looks it looks like so much fun. It, it looks like uh, so much fun. But it's definitely and and I know people who do things like you know pick up you know for 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 five pounds, euros, dollars, whatever. Uh, you know, yeah, digi cams and then start hacking at them with a screwdriver and stuff like that. You know, to see what they can get out of them. Uh, you know, as well to to try and uh, and there's more sort of glitch photography, I guess, as 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 well as lo-fi photography, but loads of stuff to be loads of fun to be had here okay all right so have either of you tried the game boy camera by the way what? that is one that i have not tried i okay. held one once but i didn't really spend much time with it okay all i right. do appreciate the uh, the noise masquerading as grain but but i, I, I think that, <laughs> that, that does it's called that. a pixel grid yeah i don't think it's i don't think it's noise i think they're pixels as big as your fist jeremiah is what they uh, are right? probably <laughs> right and um you know th that again it becomes an aesthetic now in 2023 24 um we appreciate that kind of um, lo-fi aesthetic as being somewhat sentimental for those who grew up with that. Um, you know, that's like, um, you know, music from early um, electronic games, video games, mm -hmm. you know, with the boop, 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 boop. Eight bit um, stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you could go to Spotify, Apple Music, and <laughs> you could find playlists of, you know, composers. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, playing in that yes. realm, and and in fact, um, I took my granddaughter to see Mario, uh, Super Mario Brothers oh, movie, yeah. which yeah, was yeah. I highly recommend. It's I was really great fun. that, yeah. I like that one. Uh, but they used a lot of that. They had different techniques, obviously, of animation in it, but they they did play to that music effectively. I <laughs> thought in in that both orchestrally and simply. So, yes, again, that was great. Great movie that actually. We went as a family to see that one as well. It was awesome. Cool. Okay, next up then uh, in the world of lo-fi photography, get back to analog this time, and we're going for pinhole photography this time, which I know uh, all three of us have done. So yeah. yes, <clears throat> so there's there's and again back to Flickr this time to find a good uh, a good pinhole. There are lots of groups on Flickr uh, for pinhole photography, um, and uh, Chris is scrolling through some here, and again it's like you know this is. It's a different thing for me. It's very different to the Holgers because the whole the Holger is a I'll call it like a normal camera in the sense that it has a, you know a shutter that will trigger in under a second and what have you. Um, the pinholes, of course, you know uh, because the aperture is so small, it's a very different thing. Everything is focused but from in focus from front to back as as you know as long as uh, as long as you've got a well laser etched pinhole or drilled pinhole um and uh yeah the exposure is simply how how long do i need to keep the lens cap off or equivalent um so it's a it gives a different aesthetic if it's landscape the clouds are always blurred and moving or but you know often you know you can take a photograph in a crowded place and the people don't appear on the film because they move too quickly and stuff like that so uh, i think it's a a, a quite a special way of doing things um you know in it's it's also different from the holger in the fact that you can really you can really think about how you're using a pinhole camera and how you, you know the and how you take the shots how you frame the shots and how you take the shots so i think it, it feels always to me like a very different discipline's not quite the right word but a very different creative process to uh, uh, what what re what always fascinates me is that it, everything is at the exact same level of sharpness, no matter how far away it is from yes. the camera. So you can you can have things uh, as close as a few millimeters, and then things as few as, uh, as as far as a few kilometers, and you end up 
having this is it's a is it is its own aesthetic or maybe not even the same maybe the same level of unsharpness from front yeah. to back because there's always depending on the size of the hole in relation to the to the film size there's it, it's never super sharp it's always a bit of a a dreamy um definitely blurry kind of effect. no it, you know i know that chris you've played with <clears throat> with them um on on the large format size i have i, I a, built one i built yeah, one i have yeah. a wooden uh pinhole camera that's um that takes uh, four by five yes and uh, I have a pinhole, um, quote, lens or lens cap for <clears throat> uh, M mount for Leica and have used, have used both, especially during the pandemic, during my daily long walks in the Venice canals and, and took many pictures with uh, my Leica and the pinhole and was really astonished at how, how beautiful, how ethereal and how... Mm -hmm creamy they are especially if you don't over process them later in editing and allow the aesthetic to kind of emerge and yet kind of maybe do a little bit of of blending so that you bring out a little more of the kind of mids um it's a very specific um <clears throat> very specific aesthetic that really joins i mean it's very interesting to see a four by five uh print and a digital uh, print capture, um, they are very closely connected um, despite the formatting and, and um, film versus digital aesthetic. Another fun fact with uh, with large or with any there, there's there's a certain size of pinhole that is ideal for a certain size of film. So um, there's calculators out there and you can find mm. out and uh, and of course, the the hole is an aperture, so they you, you pretty much get an f stop. And when your normal lenses go down to f sixteen, f twenty two, and then most lenses stop there. Um, the the large format pinhole, the four by five pinhole, I think that I have is f two hundred and twenty or something. It's, 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 it's just I think mine's about two hundred. I think I, I mine's not large for well, it's it sort of is almost in a way. Um, it's a six by twelve. So although it takes medium format roll film, the, the 12 centimeters is, you know, is equivalent to four inches, right? So it's, it's sort of a large format, but a cut down large format, if that makes sense. Uh, and a real fun project, if you have a couple of hours um, on a Sunday afternoon, is to make a matchbox into a 35 millimeter pinhole camera, <laughs> which, is, which is fairly simple. All you need is a... a a, a little pin, piece a of hole. aluminum, a hole. Well, a, a piece, of, a piece of uh, aluminum foil with a with a pinhole in it, and um, you can take two um, two canisters, thirty five millimeter metal ones, and glue them to the side with light tight tape, and then a spool of film from one into the other through the matchbox, and just uh, expose that way. Nice. It's, it's just a fun, a fun little project. <laughs> nice definitely so right. i i haven't shot i have to say uh although i love the pinhole i haven't shot my pinhole camera in a long long time i should probably find it wherever it might be well and and uh, shove a in april, april traditionally every year in april there's the world pinhole day yes so. there is isn't there yes there's also i have Holger, a feeling actually, I should have said there's also a holger <laughs> week every year as well so i have a feeling it coincides with 420 possible <laughs> possible <laughs> So, and then we have, uh, yeah, there's always a Holger week every year as well. So, um, okay, right. Next one. And this is, this is coming back to my rabbit hole, right? Okay. So I need you guys to keep me honest here and not let me disappear down it too far. But that printer that I was talking about the other week, uh, the, the Munbin printer. Yes. Let me put the pink um, one on the screen. The pink one. Yeah. I don't have the pink one. I was uh, just a black and white one, but, um, the, the, stated purpose of this printer primarily is to print postage labels for parcels right so the ones you get with the address and the return address and the barcodes and things like that on um yeah a 654 sticky label uh and uh you you, you just get the stickers either on a roll or, or folded up in a stack and they just you know, run through the printer and um, i've been having so much fun with this um i'm really enjoying it and it it's it, it, it it's another way of the low fi of it freeing you up 
because so, it, what it means is if this is your output medium at the point of capture you can do whatever you want right you can shoot with a phone you could shoot with a leica you could shoot with a 150 megapixel phase one camera right if you want to <laughs> it, you know when, when this is your output medium you know it really it really does um you know uh come out it matters not what camera you shoot with <laughs> So, so what you have there is the uh, one hundred and forty pound USB thermal label printer. It's it's fast. It's made for, uh, I guess, like uh, shipping organizations and things like that. Yeah, small businesses um, and stuff like let that. Let me show yeah. you. Let let me show you the 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 uh, counter piece to that. Oh, you've got. Can you, got, can you see that? Yeah, it's, it's overexposed here because of the, the lighting, but. Um, it looks like a cartoon character, um, and I'm going to take a picture of you guys here on the screen. <laughs> there we go. Oh, this is technology, and it's out. You're, you're you're using your phone to take a photo of us I'm, on the screen of your computer. So yeah, I'm I've I've taken a picture of you. Okay. I'm sending this to the printer via mm -hmm. Bluetooth, and. Oh, and it just comes out straight away. See, that's pretty fast. Is that, and is that is that a sticky label or is that? And this a one is a roll? sticky label. Okay, cool. So, just now, ripping now, this off. Now take a picture of it and put it up on our website. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I will. There I we will. are. In so, all our thermally printed glory. So this is made in China. Um, yeah, you find it on the on the usual suspects, uh, including Amazon and so on. It comes with. A whole box of like additional paper rolls and, nice. and accessories, uh, sticky, non-sticky, and so on, uh, colors. Um, and I think, if I remember correctly, it was. I mean, it's a cheap plastic thing. It was maybe twenty-five bucks. Yeah, it, it, the, the, they're it not expensive. The, the great thing about these things is they're not expensive and important. I mean, I've got here. Uh, oh, I've got my big strip of stickies that I printed yesterday. Just and this is just. Oh, yeah. from, from your printer? This, these are bigger. These yeah, are oh, yeah. Bigger. So uh, yeah. what I'm tending to find is that actually fitting two on a on a four by six sticker is quite handy. So here's, uh, it's difficult to even get them all to show it to the camera at once. Um, but yeah, you know, just printing two photos on a four by six sticker and just having and just having fun with it. You know, it's just it, it it's. Yeah, and you can cut them out, stick them in a, a journal or whatever. I'm tending to stick mine actually in it, just a little journal where I keep notes day to day, and and uh, yeah, they can just be a little record. And it's since, fun. Since we're comparing aesthetics of small printers, <laughs> I thought I would share mine. Oh, you've got yours as well. Yeah, yours now is a retro-looking thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. this is very retro-looking. Oh, it's like a 1950s beautiful. mechanical adding up machine. Yeah, it is stunning. It's metal, very high quality. This the label is, I don't know. I bet the prints are high quality. Jing though. Chen, <laughs> that's what it says. Uh, it it works absolutely brilliantly. Like you, very little to do to connect, you know. And and um, again, high quality for its particular limitations. So, yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, so was, so my little project that I've got uh, in my head at the moment is I'm printing out a bunch of these these things at the moment, and I'm going to collage together some spreads. Right, uh, probably uh, A5 double spreads. So so it'll be, it'll be the same size as an A4. I think I'm going to build build some spreads, and then I might digitize that somehow and print them as a zine. You know, uh, and then you could so you could have like the original. Right, yeah, you know, uh, and then you could have the 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 zine version, and um, that's that the or the printed zine version. That's kind of where my head's at with these things at the moment, just as a little project to do. Um, I was thinking I might do a Christmas holidays one as well. You know, for you know, going to see people, uh, extended family, you could easily put one of the, uh, throw one of these things together, take the printer with you, and and let people use it and stuff like that. So does that I think printer is that project. is it that printer battery operated? Uh, no, my, our printer is uh, it powered by the mains, um, and right. uh, so yeah, I'm, it's a, you guys have got smaller ones. I've got I've got a couple of pocket printers. I've got the Instax ones, of course. Uh, I've got a uh, a dye sublimation pocket printer, although that's not. Is that very a Canon good selfie? Quality. Probably. Uh, no, the the Canon selfie is is not a pocket size. We do have a Canon selfie as well, which prints the six by fours. Um, but I do have a you have a, a you have quite a good printer. You can train them in around a the really house. Good printer. <laughs> I've got I've got 
four, five small printers now, you know, that that I love to use. Um, you know, uh, so... It, it I, can just, gi- I can give you a phone number of someone who you can talk to. <laughs> Do they sell more yeah. printers? Because I'm always looking out for more printers. Mm, no, it's <laughs> more quite. to kick the habit. <laughs> So, but it's, I love, you know, and I know we talk about this occasionally, right? But, you know, uh, and I know we all love the physicality uh, of art. Yes. Um, uh, But this for me is, uh, you know, it's it's to try and remove, partly it's to try and remove as much friction as possible. And part, yeah, and so I love the Instax printer, right? Yeah, the, the, I got a new one earlier this year, which which uh, prints on the squares and it works on Bluetooth rather than Wi-Fi. And you might remember, I said having the Bluetooth version was a game changer, right? Because you don't, it, it makes it so much easier to use because you don't have to derail whatever Wi-Fi you're on and, and you don't have it disconnecting as it powers down after two minutes and stuff like that. Uh, it was a real game changer. And then there's the economics of it as well, right? So at the moment, I think an Instax Square print is probably about 75 pence. It's probably 75 cents where you guys are, rough, roughly speaking, right? Um, it, it varies a bit. And it's quite a lot, yeah. These these 4 by 6 stickers <laughs> are about 4 pence per sticker. And that's for the 6 by 4 that you can print two photographs on. So I'm paying 2 pence per photograph. And worth every penny. And, 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 and that's, yeah, and I'm getting my quality as well. I'm getting 2 pence worth of quality out of the print. <laughs> um, but the... <laughs> Because, of course, the thermal printers don't have cartridges in them that you need to change, right? Because that's not how the technology works. So, And, and uh, of course, their archival quality is just, just like nothing. I'm not, <laughs> oh, so, so I'm not leaving them in the sunshine on the windowsill now. I'm also, the, the, also uh, as they are thermal printers, you have to be really careful not to heat them up too much. because You want to store them in the freezer <laughs> in a dark container. They'll last maybe another two years. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. that, but that you know, transient art. Discuss. Yeah, that's 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 right? the that's the in Instagram story of photography. I tell it you what, it'll be, it'll be visible a long time after most things on Instagram are, are, are unfindable. <laughs> that, that technically the photos will still be there, I am sure. But try finding them when yeah. a billion photos are uploaded every day or whatever it is. So anyway, there you go. Look, I, I'm uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying the world of lo-fi and low-resolution photography at the moment. I, it's I have good, one it's more thing to show um, regarding lo-fi, and uh, it goes along the Holger, and it's uh, a, a type of camera, a type of an analog film camera that you can buy for ten bucks, maybe. Cool. And it's old, and it's a box camera. Hmm. Oh. And these these are these are really you, sometimes you find like ten for fifty bucks or something. That looks um, in very good condition. That one. I I I I I'm a bit obsessed about these. I have thirty, forty of them, <laughs> of different kinds, <laughs> different sizes, different brands, different. Yeah, because because it's it's totally fun, and you get a medium format film and load it, and then you have your eight shots, I think. <laughs> six by nine i mean it's really large the format is really large so you can have them developed you can get contact prints you can just photograph the negatives and and invert it on your on your phone or something um they have they have tripod threads on two sides so you can shoot in two orientations without having to tilt the tripod it's it's, it's just fascinating low tech um they 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 were built in the millions back then and there's still so many around that um, just search for box camera make sure you find one that doesn't require any special film like the brownies do um, but in, yeah, in Europe you, an aqua yeah, box or something I was going to say are, that actually it's really worth checking what film it takes because if it takes yes. 120 <clears throat> film you're fine if it takes 620 film or you're something else <laughs> then then yeah it's yeah it's difficult you can buy certainly in this country now there are people who are doing things like cutting down 120 film yeah, and re-spooling it and selling it retail so that some of these that. really old cameras it, it, yeah it's yeah it's it's, it's um not, but, not easy but if it takes 120 film you're set you're fine you can I I, I threw into the discussion uh, the very first digital camera that I ever owned, a Casio. 
Ooh. And uh, this was, uh, I think I got it in 89. Um, it was a miracle uh, when I used it. I think it had... It changed a lot, yeah. Yeah, I think 300 pixels, I think. <laughs> 300,000 pixels, noisy. maybe? What? 300,000 pixels, maybe, rather than 300 pixels? No, it was very... A tiny, <laughs> tiny little chip and very pixelated imagery, uh, but instant. May um, maybe they sold you a Game Boy camera. <laughs> I think they, they probably repurposed it in some kind of... Uh, um, <laughs> box with uh, you know i remember i had batteries for it and shot a lot for it and, and shot a lot with it and and um output it i f i think he used these cassettes not cass not like um floppy disks um as i recall um cool. kind of spun up <laughs> <laughs> and then you had to i forget how i plugged it in or got it out to my dot matrix printer but uh, all fun. Um, and again, you know, now we see, you know, iPhone 15s emulating that kind of look because that mm -hmm. becomes part of a historical aesthetic, much yeah. the way daguerreotype or collodion prints or wet plate, you know, th those kinds of things create an emotional response as well as an aesthetic response because the emotion is connected to where we were at the time when we grew up, how we developed, like music, you know, when we come of age and listen to a certain body of music that becomes, in a way, a bellwether for our whole lives. And it, it changes, obviously, with each generation. But Do you know, that's very interesting, right? I am making my way chrono in chronological order through the Beatles at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's something I, uh, I yeah, because I, everybody knows the Beatles, right? Or everybody knows some of the Beatles. But if you, uh, it's, it's a long time since I've listened to much of the the Beatles, right? And uh, I think it must have been the the you know the news around the new single that came out that prompted managers. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to start yeah you know, at the beginning, and I'm up to uh, I'm up to the White Album at the moment, right? I was listening to Magical Mystery Tour yesterday and stuff. And Magical Mystery Tour is one of my favourites. Um, uh, but it's it, it, it's and, and it's anything but low fidelity, right? So let's not get confused here. But it's it's really interesting what you say, Jeremiah, about it being a slightly older aesthetic, and you can hear um, you can hear things even in there that influence in, that this is now some of it sixty years ago, but maybe you know, the, you know certainly over fifty years ago uh, that still resonate today. I was listening to something. I was like, oh. And I can't remember what it was. I was like, oh, that really sounds like a David Holmes movie soundtrack. Right. And it was one of the songs off Magical Mystery Tour yesterday. It might have been flying. Um, and it's like, oh, wow. That, and you can say, I wonder if David Holmes was um, actively inspired by that right whether he took inf inspiration from it or whether it's just an, an accidental thing or whatever or an organic thing but it's like wow there's so so much good stuff in in some of the sorry ra ra random <laughs> extra bit <laughs> to talk about all right lo-fi <laughs> photography awesome yeah totally my my thing um let us Move on to our picks, and let's start with Adrian. Why don't you just dive in? Who is Cole Schaefer? Uh, well, interesting. Uh, so uh, I I sign up for email newsletters these days because um, you can always unsubscribe, and if I find them and I read them and they're interesting, um, Cole Schaefer is a uh, I've I've put in our notes he's a multimedia creator. Uh, that doesn't mean he does video. I mean he literally does writing. He does poet. Yeah, he writes. Um, uh, he's a copywriter, but he writes poetry. He also does uh, some filmmaking and photography and, and things like that. He has a podcast. He literally creates across multiple media. Um, and he, it, the, the reason is I find it's different is that, especially with the newsletter, is it's because he's a professional copywriter, it's wonderful to read. It really is. It's it's short. It's punchy. The messages are there, um, and you know, and it just makes you realise how amazing a skill proper copywriting is. Proper writing 
of course, but particularly in this instance, copywriting is such an amazing skill. Um, and uh, I like the presentation too on his website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just sharing it. It's nothing to do with photography, particularly. I'm just sharing it because it's something I'm enjoying at the moment. But he presents it with good photography, so he does. That yeah. adds to the whole thing. Cool, mm -hmm. very cool. All right, uh, Jeremiah, you brought us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The Fisher Prize PXL two thousand, a camera that I I own with its own camera bag. Um, th this is uh, I I think one of the great. What does it shoot on? It shoots on audio cassettes. <laughs> That's nuts. Uh, it is I guess the equivalent. You of shouldn't my put Casio audio on audio cassettes. Let alone black video. and white. Um, as you can see, the deluxe camcorder system. Um, and you know, it's, again, it's kind of a point and shoot film. I use that term loosely, uh, camera and, um, it, it <laughs> um, I got it back when I, this is one of my prized possessions. It still <laughs> works. <laughs> uh, obviously uploading it is a little bit of a trick. <laughs> No. Have you have you used it in not any lately. of your your movies? No, no, I have not. Uh, if, if I'm going for that kind of uh, ultra grainy look, I tend to shoot on 16 with a matte cut out of the middle and then blow it up and <laughs> okay. add contrast to it. It's a little more controllable. But this is a fantastic example of some engineer <laughs> at Fisher Price had an idea that they brought to it was not a success at all it was a complete <laughs> really? product bomb and uh, you can still find them though but uh, again it has this great pixelated view and uh, you know who could fault a movie camera that shoots on audio cassettes i mean you know it's fabulous awesome I just, awesome I, 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 that. I, I just wonder why how it's even possible to put video on a <laughs> I never questioned it. <laughs> All right. Um, and last but not least, <clears throat> I brought food. Food for those film cameras, for the Holgas. Well, not quite for the Holgas, <laughs> but for other film cameras. And, of course, we have to talk about Harman's Phoenix. Yeah. Tablet, Interesting. Which, which, okay, this is, this is wild. This is literally wild because um, you, you find all sorts of different films and and it turns out that at least some of them are re repackaged other films so some eastern european filmmaker makes a film and that's probably being sold at, as three different films in three different markets and so on the, um, it is rare that new films come onto the market like really new films and uh, um, we saw this with ectachrome by kodak how long ago? Eight years ago or something. Um, and now Harman Photo, the the mothership of Ilford, um, has created the Phoenix 200, which is a color film. And they are, okay, they're, they're just starting with color filmmaking. They haven't done this before. And they have now created this film, which is, um, if you, if you uh, read correctly into what they write... It's a bit like the model that uh, Impossible did when they resurrected Polaroid film, as in it's still kind of experimental. It's still not perfect in colors. It does. It has its grain and its quirks, so it's a bit of an artsy kind of thing. But, um, of course, they want to reinvest what they make with this uh, batch of film and, and make it better the next time, and so on. So it's What, a, it's what differentiates it from existing uh, films? Um, it let me let me see if I can find. Well, uh, uh, one thing is that it's um, <laughs> of course, given that it's Ilford, is it's in color, right? There, but that's a very obvious thing to say. And um, it's they they've known how to do C forty one films for some time because there's, they've always they've always had or long had a a black and white C forty one film. True, uh, true. 
I forget the name of it. The colors, um, the aesthetics of this film is is different than many of the others that I've seen. Yeah, it, it kind of has an it has a nostalgic aesthetic of to it, doesn't it? A sort of late seventies, early eighties kind of aesthetic to it, which is uh, I think which is yeah, it mutes um, the color. It, it, yeah, it, it or it boosts back some the of them as well. Really. Seems. Which is yeah, I, but I'm I'm really pleased. With this. I mean, you know, having you know, um, I, I I very very loosely know a couple of the people at, at, at Ilford, um, and uh, they're great people, and and they all, um, the, everybody that works there is 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 there because they they love it, right? It's um, so to see them going and doing something new and succeeding as a business and stuff like that is is fantastic, um, and deserves so. to be supported. Yeah, a, yeah. If anybody's interested in a deeper dive into this, it, yeah, it does. Aesthetic. If anybody's interested in a deeper dive in this, by the way, um, Michelle and one of the other from the t from Ilford or uh, from Harmon, I should say, um, were interviewed by the Sunny Sixteen podcast. Um, oh, uh, of course, we're yeah, going to link to that. The uh, which came out a week or so ago, I think. Um, it, uh, ju actually, just just a bit of a, an update. It's a podcast that I, I'm no longer actively as associated with. Um, uh, I, having done it for many, many years, I needed uh, uh, it was, it's time to stop. Um, but uh, Rachel and Claire are still doing it, and they're still doing a fantastic job, and um, probably better without <laughs> without all those boys around, to be honest. Um, so uh, yeah, go listen to that because Rachel and Claire interviewed them, and so you'll learn lots more about the new product there. All right, so we have food, we have cameras, we have weird Printers. digital tech, and we have cameras that record onto audio cassettes, of all things. That, that kind of reminds me of the old C64 days where you'd have your data on a cassette. Yeah, yeah, and, I had that, definitely. And, yep. you'd, and you'd do like... like pirated copies on a, on a cassette deck to another cassette deck. Yeah, uh, yep. <sighs> yeah, so um, go shoot lo-fi and have fun and take take the tech out of photography. I think that's yeah, that's where that's where lesson. this goes. Good All lesson. right, um, thanks everyone for being here. We will be back soon with more. You can find us at thefutureofphotography.com or join our Discord. Everything is on the left bottom of the screen. We'll be back soon. Till then, everyone, take care and bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Bye.